What I've been truly excited about is where our humanity and our divinity meet, and what I call our evolving edge. Now when most of us get on the spiritual path, especially in the non-dual world, we have this idea that there's some, some end point, some absolute end point that we arrive to called enlightenment, awakening, whatever it is. But when, we, when we're on the path, you know, for, for some time, we may discover that awakening, enlightenment, is not some ultimate end point. That there's th these various stages of awakening, and, what, and a stage that most people, you know, experience, especially in the non-dual world, if they've, <laughs> if they've been on the path long enough, they have this transcendent awakening. And a transcendent awakening is a beautiful thing. It teaches us that we are, that we are not our mind, that we are not our emotions, that we're not this body. And it's an incredible experience to have, but it is not the end. And so many people are having these, these transcendent awakenings. They go and they visit a non-dual teacher at satsang or whatever it is, and they experience this, this, op this incredible space, spaciousness, this incredible openness. And they realize, oh, I am not my mind, I am not my emotions. The ego doesn't exist. Yet at some point, you know, whether it's a day, a month, a year later, you know, life comes along and it pulls them back down into their humanity. And they think that they did something wrong, you know, and they, they, they wonder what happened, what happened to this expansive space. And so what I, what I like to work with people with is, because I'm both a non-dual teacher and a, and a psychotherapist, is working with our humanity, being willing to embrace our humanity, and seeing that the descent into our humanity is actually a movement of evolution. It's a movement of deeper awakening, and it's an invitation for us to awaken on the level of our humanity. And most people, as they come down into their humanity, they say, no, I don't want anything to do with this. There's too much darkness there, too much confusion, too much pain, too much anxiety. How do I get back to the transcendent space? You know, so what I often do is help people to realize the transcendent space did not go anywhere. That this transcendent space is always here. In every moment, it's the very thing looking out of your eyes, the very thing hearing my voice. And yet, when our humanity comes forward, the invitation is, is can we, from this transcendent space, can we embrace this pain within us in an open-hearted way, so this is a way that includes the heart, that includes this movement of love. And so as we do this work of embracing pain, we become fearlessly open-hearted and discover our inherent indestructibility. And so if we're truly going to be free, free in the world, free in the world of form, free in our humanity, we have to discover that who and what we are is indestructible, who and what we are is this force of love, who and what we are is big enough to embrace our pain, to embrace our insanity, to embrace our confusion with love, as love. And as we do so, what we find is once where there was confusion, as we embrace it, as we're willing to feel it, open-heartedly feel, like feel the pain of confusion, as we feel it fully and we join with the energy of confusion, we see all that energy comes forward and then it releases. And we, and we realize ourselves as clarity. And so as we do this work with anger, as we embrace anger and feel the anger fully, completely, open-heartedly, and allow our body to shake and tremble, we discover on an energetic level how powerful we are, how powerfully open-hearted we are. When we embrace sadness and experience our life falling apart, we experience our indestructibility our tenderness and our compassion. And so to me, it's incredible work to descend into our humanity, and dis to discover the gifts that are here, to discover the, the opportunity for evolution, for embodiment. And in a sense, when we step into these spaces within us, we are stepping into the dynamic nature of our divinity. We are stepping into the dynamic force of evolution within us as us. And so it's deeply exciting to do this work. And as we do it more and more, we begin to realize that we become one with this dynamic force of God, this one with this, this dynamic movement of divinity. And we become the very movement of evolution itself. 
the very movement of love itself, the very movement of power itself. And it's exciting work. And as we go through this work and kind of come out the other side, we discover that there's no end to this work. That there's no end because as we begin to clear out our humanity, then we begin to work on ourselves in a, in a collective way, like on the collective consciousness level. And find that, you know, some teachers call this work endless and they say, I don't want to touch it. But to me it's endless and it's exciting. Because evolution is endless. Who and what we are is endless. And as we embrace this work fully, we lose our anxiety about being human. We lose our anxiety about being in form. And we experience this tremendous level of freedom, the freedom of being human, the freedom of being embodied. And not that many people are, are interested in this type of freedom because what's required is that we're willing to face and embrace pain. But to me, if we're truly going to be free, we have to be willing to do this work. And whether we like it or not, God, life, the universe, whatever it is, will bring this work forward within us. We've even seen the greatest teachers who they've fallen on their face because they've tried to ignore this work, they've tried to ignore their shadow, they've tried to deny this work. But to me what it shows is that there's nothing wrong with the teacher, that they too are evolving. There is no ultimate endpoint to enlightenment, to freedom, that all of us are evolving. No matter if we're the greatest avatar that wa walked the earth, <laughs> or if we are, <laughs> you know, the most, the most humble being. All of us are evolving. And so this work, to me, is about embracing life fully, and embracing evolution fully, and allowing this movement, this dynamic flow of divinity, this dynamic flow of life, allowing ourselves to wake up and to realize that who and what we are is one with evolution, one with the vast space of empty freedom, and also one with the dynamic flow of freedom in us as us.